Today I'm going to be going over how to convert John Deere selective control valves from the Deere style to an ISO style, Pioneer style. I'm going to be using the John Deere kit today. We got this through our local dealer. Uh, it's part number RE206778 if you want to look that up and use it for yourself. Uh, this will work for any John Deere 20 series, 30 series, or 40 series tractor. Um, from 1946 all the way up to 1982 you can use these on. So it seems like to convert there's two options. You can either go with this style which is like a quick coupler disconnect. Uh, you just push it in and then it's also a quick snap out. There's no levers or anything. Uh, and then there's the style that we're going to be doing today. I've already switched this valve. This is what Deer provides and this is what we're going to be going with today. So since this is the valve that we're going to be working on, first thing we need to do is remove this uh, flow control lever. Uh, there's just a little roll pin in there that we need to take and punch out. And that'll give us better access to this Welsh plug under here. Now as much as I'd like to and you probably would like to too, you cannot skip this step. Um, when we go to put the new valve in, uh, you're not going to have enough clearance and you're going to end up taking that off anyways. And it's better to do it now while everything's still closed up than when you've got the top of this open and you can get dirt and other contaminants in your hydraulics. Now with that lever off, I'm just going to take and drill a small pilot hole in that Welsh plug. Not all the way through because I don't want to get any you know, shavings or anything in there, but just enough to weaken it up so I can punch through it. And that's about as deep as I'd want to go. Now to get that plug out, we take our cold chisel and I'll place it in that drilled out part and we'll try and break through that Welsh plug. Now that I'm most of the way through that Welsh plug, I can take and put my punch in and kind of pry a little bit and try and pop that out of there. Okay, with our Welsh plug out of here, that brings us to the earring that holds our lever in and we can just take a screwdriver and pop that off. Alrighty. Don't need that anymore. And then there's a spring under here that we gotta lose to. Now this part's gonna get a little oily but we're gonna be able to take and pull our lever down out of the bottom. After that we're going to have to take our valve body and pop it forward. I like to take a socket and place it on the back. There's a little indent for it to seat against. And then I just take a pry bar. I'm going to make sure it's square. Just like that. Now we just have to take and pull it the rest of the way out. And it seems like mine's kind of tough so I'll get a different socket and press it the rest of the way out. This is the actual quick coupler itself, and we can just set this on the side for now. We're not going to be using it, using it anymore. Next thing then is I'm going to take this locking collar and slide it back, and there's a snap ring in here that I've got to take some screwdrivers and dig out of that. This part can be kind of tricky. And you're going to want to, you might want safety glasses for this because you know, snap rings like to come shooting out of there. We got it out pretty easy. And we're going to want to save this because we're going to need to put it back in with our new coupler. And now with that snap ring out, this little lock collar should just slide right out. Now we can see all the gunk and grime that's in there. Time to clean it out. So now that I have it cleaned up the best that I can, we have to pick the O-rings and backing washers out. And they sit right about here. I don't know if I can get you to focus on it. There's one here and then there's one in the very back there. So I'm going to take those out. It helps to have a dentist tool like this, just kind of a curved thing, where you can scoop and get under that O-ring. I like to take the O-ring out first. So there's one O-ring.
Here's a backing washer. They look kind of like a little white coil spring. And then there's another set of those in the back of the valve. Okay, now that we've got our coupler assembly fully disassembled, we can open up our new kit. Maybe before you take it apart, you do this to make sure you've got a full kit and all the parts, but you should. Um, we've got a bag with a bunch of gaskets and our Welsh plugs. We've got a new coupler body with a dust cover cap. Another coupler body with dust cover for the other side. We've got some pins. And then we've got the levers that go on these pins to move them back and forth that replace these things. First thing I'm going to do is open up our seal kit. And I've got the option of these V seals. You can see that. Uh, they've got a little sealing lip on them. I guess they're supposed to use hydraulic pressure to push that inside lip down and seal it. So we can choose between those or the o-ring style that we took out with the backing washers. Now personally I like the o-ring and backing washer style. I feel like there's a little bit less drag on your coupler assembly and it's easier to move it back and forth. We've got some that have the v-seal style in there and it is just a bear to get the hydraulics unhooked because there's pressure on them and these are kind of holding it up and it's it's just a real pain, so I think I'm going to go with the O-ring style again with these. Now you can go with whichever style you prefer. If you do O-rings, this is the order that they have to go in in their slots. So this would be the back of the tractor, and you'll be going with white, and then O-ring, and then O-ring, and then another white washer. If you choose to go with the V-seals, um, you just need to know that you need to make sure the V channels are facing each other uh, because this is where the oil is going to be and that's what it uses to actually seal these things. Because I'm going with the O-ring style, I'm going to start with my white washer first and I'm just going to take my finger and kind of push them in there. It's going to be hard. It's hard to film this in any way. So you just kind of got to get it into the groove that you got the old one out of i find i found that it's easier to put in the white washers first and then come in later with the o-rings and put them on the proper side versus trying to get the white washer in on the proper side after you have the o-rings in Alrighty, now that i got my new seals in it's time for our uh, coupler body and what i'm going to do i'm just going to take a little bit of oil and just kind of lube this up so it slides in easier uh, you only really have to do this back part because that's where the seals slide and that's pretty much the only contact area. But we're going to want to take and face our valve body so the chamfered side, you can see this side doesn't have that, is facing up because we're going to have an o-ring that seals against that. And then all I do is take and put it in, wiggle it around, and there she goes. One final to get it past those o-rings and we're in. There you can see the hole with the chamfered side up and now we got to grab our pin from the kit and this pin has to drop in here like so. Now this part, it's not directional by any means, but this part gets a little tricky. Uh, you have to go in from the bottom with something and push this ball forward so there's enough room to get this pin in here and then it's spring loaded on the backside ball so we have to overcome that and then we can just continue to press it through make sure it's lined up like that and then press it down all the way there you can see that our pin is seated down all the way and oh it's about a quarter inch three sixteenths of an inch below the surface here and the o-ring that was in there is down seated into the coupler body 
Now we can come down onto the bottom side and in your little gasket kit should be two little roll pins. And we're going to take our lever. There's a hole here and a corresponding hole in that valve pin. We're just going to take and put it in. You want to have this notched side up and we're going to slip it on here. And we also have to take and press down on the pin from the top side. in order to get it to come down enough that our roll pin goes in. Now we can take and get our new Welsh plug out of our kit and just pop him in the top here. Should sit down pretty flush. And we're gonna take a pin punch because this one's a little hard to get to and we're just going to take and crimp the top of this down. And what this is doing is it's expanding it because it's kind of dome shaped. And so that's sealing it up. And we don't want to go too much, we just want enough that it's sealed. So that seems about good. It's tight in there. Alrighty, we're almost done. Now remember that snap ring I told you not to lose before? We're just going to take and put that over here and work that back into the slot that it goes. Sometimes these go pretty easy, sometimes they're awful. Okay. And that's all there is to it. Now for the other side. Well, there's both of them in. Now lastly, we have to put on our little dust covers and those go right here. It's just another little E-clip. Take that off. So there's an E-clip and a washer that holds them on. Then we just pull off the old thing. Toss that on the side. New one. Second new one. Washer. And E-clip again. Here's the last, last thing. I almost forgot to put my little uh, control lever back on there. Here we go. Now we got one, two, and three Pioneer remotes on our John Deere 4230. She's ready to go out and work in the field. I hope you enjoyed this video and thought it was pretty helpful. If you did, please consider, you know, liking this video or maybe hitting the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.